السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين رسول الله We're here in the in a place called Somon in Senegal um, a country where you find 97% of the population as as Muslims yet a country that is very open to the non-Muslims and wherever you go in the in the world you can see the uh, openness of Islam in the Muslims yet we are being betrayed all over the world um, Many of our readers and listeners and those those, those who watch us ask um, and question and send messages asking us about what's going on in in France. Um, to me, it is a kind of hypocrisy, a double standard. Uh, it has nothing to do with the freedom of expression because you are having to do with a person who has about two billion people behind him who love him more than they love their themselves their own selves and you're doing it in a way that is very unjust and the world leaders are acting so hypocrite. First of all, the advice I give to myself and to my fellow Muslims is to look at it like this. If you go back 1500 years ago and you find Abu Jahl, you see Utba, Sheba, Rabi'a, Umayya ibn Khalif, Asi ibn Wa'il, Walid ibn Mughir. These people who hated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who tried to murder him, who accused him of madness, of sihr, of shi'r, of you name it. And they would do anything to stop the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Especially uh, someone like Abu Lahab, his own uncle, who used to follow him, literally. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is white, he would say, no, it's black. If it's black, he would say, no, it's white. It's why when I started to um, write her response, I opened it with this verse. The but yada shalia ibdo kabi lahabin. Watabba kullu muadil badri viru tabi. Because Abu Lahab literally used to do that. And if you if, if you look at it, I think these uh, giant enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if they had access to the, to new technology today, they would do worse than Charlie. First of all, you have to look at it like that. Al kufru millat muwahida, and it will continue like this. But we as Muslims, what should we do? First of all, we should educate ourselves about Islam, and second of all, we have to behave as Muslims. Look at here where I am now in Senegal. Ninety-seven percent of the population is Muslim. Yet 97% of the national holidays are non-Muslim. <laughs> Is that how we represent Islam? Of course, no. We were colonized, yes, but it's been over 50 years that we are free from these French people. So we have to decide ourselves. What are our leaders, our religious leaders, what are they doing? Literally nothing. So um, to me, we have to um, focus on, on, on this. And you would see, for example, in Ramadan, you see some of our 
channels bring some comedians talking about the Quran, about the fasting, in a very um, comic way. People laugh, and it, you know this shouldn't um, be let go in a country that calls themselves or itself a Muslim country. So to me, first of all, we have to know Islam and to represent Islam well. We have to educate ourselves about the Prophet Islam because these um, uh, pictures that we are seeing everywhere, th these are not the pictures of the Prophet Islam. The Prophet was not blind. He was the most beautiful person. You couldn't look at him uh, without looking at down because th that was the beauty that would reflect when you look at the Prophet Muhammad uh, وسلم, that the, the, the Jamal that is combined with Yalal وَمَنْ رَعَاهُ مُفَاجَاتٌ يَهَابُ بِهِ أَمَّا مُخَالِطُهُ فَزَائِدُ الرَّحَمِ One of our scholars in Senegal said in Sayyidina Hassan ibn Thabit said about him وَأَجْمَلُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَرَقَطْتُ عَيْنِي وَأَكْمَلُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَلِبُ النِّسَاءُ But they used to call him, the Kuffar used to call him مُذَمَّمْ مُذَمَّمًا أَبَيْنَا وَدِينَا وَقَلَيْنَا As you know, Ummu Jamal And the Prophet would say But they are cursing مُذَمَّمْ And I am Muhammad so first of all, we have to know that they are not talking about the Prophet, they are talking about someone else. So we have to learn the, the beauty, the characters of the Prophet of the Deen of Rasulullah and represent it very well. And when we have these um, multiple programs such as the Gamus, the Maulids, the, the, the Muggles, the, 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 the conferences, we have to have specific uh, topics and talk about, about it. Uh, about, and about Islam, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Talk about the birth, the miraculous birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam The youth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam The adolescents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam uh, the, the, the kind of husband the Prophet Muhammad Alaihi Salatu wa sallam was He was the best husband and the best father ever Michael Hart, when he wrote his book He said as a Christian, he couldn't even put Jesus on the top Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa was a, a success both in the in in, in deen and dunya both in in the spirituality and in the in in the, in the lively uh, uh, way of talking so he couldn't put anyone else on the top of the prophet sallallahu because he was the best prophet and he was the best father the the, the, the best um, friend, the best husband, the best everything you could say. Min kulli wasfin Hamid said, said Hajj Malik has a al Raja al Baraya, Yom Muzdahami, and one of our elders here in Senegal, Sayyid Ahmad Bamba said, Rama al Wara, Nayla Hotlin, Musfi'ina lahu al Hotlu, and the Rasulullah Karabu. The people are running for good, but actually they are going to a wrong direction because the right direction to get good is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Imam Busri used to say da'ma da'atuhu al-nasara fi nabiyyihim wa wahkum bima shi'ta mahan fihi wa hatakim wansub ila dhatihi ma shi'ta min sharafin wansub ila qadrihi ma shi'ta min adami fa inna fadla rasulillahi laysa lahu haddun fa yu'riba anhu naqiqun bifami so first of all we have to learn the deen we have to learn about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have to behave like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the very same behavior that he had towards these enemies of himself Abu Jahl Walid ibn Mughira, Ala Asi ibn Wa'il, Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Look at the Sahaba afterwards. They, they did all these things. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he began Mecca, the day he wanted to go out of Mecca, the day he had to leave Mecca, it was the day they, they, they met, literally to kill him, to murder him. In Darul Nadu, Allah informed him. He was hiding when he left Mecca, but when he came back, to Mecca, eight years after, the very leaders of Mecca were hiding from him, and he said to them, "What do you think I would do? What do you think that I would I, I will do to you?" They said to him, "Akhul Karim and Wabna Akhul Karim," and he said, "Idhabu fa antum khulaqa." Go, you are all free. He freed them literally. Ali salatu wasalam. And uh, with all they did. Because of his good character, because of his truthfulness, because of his um, seriousness and going to the point and continuing to call people to the life he brought, these people either ended up by being Muslims or their only children ended up by 
by, by, by being Muslims, as we say in one of Puji Nekul's Domnechi. That's why in Medina the Prophet wouldn't let people to talk about Mecca because there was this there were these Sahaba, Ikrama ibn Abi Jahl. He, did, he used to say to Ikrama that I knew that there was good in your father. He used to see good in the enemies, <laughs> and this good we can see. I'm telling you, in in, in these people of, of Europe, because we can use this to 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 teach people Islam so that. The, the children of uh, the people who are in Charlie and the other people who are hidden there, their only children will become Muslims. And we know that. We're in America and we know how many people accept Islam on a daily basis. We, 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 we see that every day. Not even uh, uh, 10 days ago in our masjid, after we finished the khutbah, people accepted Islam. They came to, to listen to what Islam is about. So we can have the same thing that the Prophet had, Ikram ibn Abi Jahl, was the, the, the son of the biggest enemy of Rasulullah and the Prophet used to tell him, I knew there was some good in your father, and his father was the Fir'aun of his ummah, and he, he literally hated the Prophet Muhammad He said to the person who killed him, it was reported that when Abdullah ibn Mas'ud killed him in, in Badr, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was a very short person, he, Abu Jahl used to laugh at him in, in Mecca, especially when he recited Surah Al-Rahman, Abu Jahl was so mad and said to him, if I kill you, they will say I'm a person and you're not a person. And he was mad, Rasulullah told him, no, it's you who's going to kill him. And literally he killed him in Badr. This is the Prophet Muhammad And uh, when he killed Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl told him that, Say to Muhammad, in this world I'm living, I'm not going to live here, someone I hate more than him. And the hereafter I'm going to, I'm not going to find there someone I hate more than him. Yet, the Prophet is so good in him. And to him that good was the person of Ikrama who came out of Abu Jahl. Walid ibn Mughira is the father of Khalid ibn Walid. You all know Khalid ibn Walid, that brave, that shuja. Uh, the, 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 the champion of Islam, you know, Amr ibn al-As, you know, Amr ibn al-As who said, I hated the Prophet Sallallahu the most before I accepted Islam, but the day I accepted Islam, it is him whom I love the most. Amr ibn al-As was not only an enemy before Islam, but his father was one of the most, uh, 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 the biggest enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, al-Asi ibn Wa'il. You know, and you see, you, you see all of them, their children end up by being Muslims. So, if Muslims need this. We're not gonna say we're gonna be violent. No, no, violence is not the solution, but just let go also is not the solution. The solution is we have to educate ourselves. We have to behave like the Prophet. We have to teach people in Europe, in America, and we as governors, people are governors. We have to put also some uh, acts that are political. We have to put the interests of Occident, uh, of, Occident of, the, of West, on the table. They either respect Rasulullah or let us go. So the, this is the, our presidents, our governors, our kings. This is the, the, their job. But when you see Mahmoud Abbas and some other Muslim uh, presidents are protesting against what happened to, 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 to Charlie and not protesting against what's happening in Syria, in Yemen, in, in, in everywhere, what, in, 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 in Nigeria. Is these people, are these people more interesting or more important than our own people? So, uh, a, a lot of articles tells us in the, in, 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 the, in, in the book, and I haven't seen any book who said it as clear as the Quran. من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في العرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا Whoever kills an innocent person is as if he is as if he killed the whole humanity ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا Whoever let a person survive help a person survive it is as though he has uh, helped the whole humanity survive So this is what we have to what we have to know and this is what we have to put together. We have to learn about the Prophet. Behave the way the Prophet slides in them behave. And call people to Islam and teach them and put political acts as governors, as presidents, not as 
these groups that are not representing Islam at all. It's not our as these individuals that don't know even what Islam is, and and we don't know even if there are Muslims or no, because the media is uh, the media, and you all know we are in a time of Hollywood where you can uh, manufacture anything and call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, and when you when we see that uh, this uh, person uh, whom we say did the act forgot his ID, we say what well, even the ordinary. Uh, uh, criminals wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't do that. Even these thieves wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't do that. So something is fishy, but that's not the problem. The problem is we as Muslims we have to know where to go. And people like myself who are just normal Muslims, who are, who are not educated, well educated in Islam, I advise you not to, you know, follow up with this, uh, with these things. When uh, Salman Rushdie wrote a book, we heard our uh, chef, one of our chefs. Uh, Ahmed Didat said that ordinary people shouldn't read it because they they need it, uh, the basics of Islam before going to, uh, to, to, to to that because there is no need for them to go there because they cannot even answer they don't know even what Islam is so know your Islam and call upon it before you go to debate and do all these things Sheikh Sha'rawi when someone wrote about Islam and he said uh, when asked uh, did you read it he said no because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us that when they talk evil of Allah and His Messenger in the Book of Allah, فَلَا تَعْرُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُدُوا فِي حَدِثٍ غَيْرِهِ So, إِنَّكَ إِذَنْ مِثْلُهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَنْ مِثْلُهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَعْمِ وَعِلْمُنَا فِقِنْ وَالْكَيْفِرِنْ فِي جَهَنَّمُ جَمْعَ And I don't want to be like them, so I don't even see and read about it. If Sha'rawi says this, but I would say the scholars should read and respond, but the ordinary Muslims should, you know, study their deen and act upon it and ask Allah wa to um, help the Muslims go back to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu because until we go back to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu to know the deen, to, to learn this deen, we're not going to make it. And we know that this is the best religion and they all know it. And I always give an example, if you love a, 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 a woman and another person loves the woman and this woman wants money, the other person wants, has money, you don't have money. This woman wants beauty, the other person has beauty, you don't have beauty. This woman wants a person who is built and you're all the other person is built. Every quality that the woman wants and loves is in the other person and you, don't, you still want that woman and, and, and you don't want to lose it. Where you, you don't want to lose her, what are you going to do? You're going to do your best to ruin the image of that person, to destroy that person to have the woman hate that person and this is what we are seeing today Islam makes sense when you look at any other religion you will see the lack of sense when in Christianity you are told that we are responsible for our own father's sins Adam's sin and Eve and women are being punished because of what Eve did for getting pregnant and uh, Bearing child, giving birth to child, and this is wrong. If I told you that if you do something, the police come to your house, they don't find you there, they can take your child, and your child didn't do anything, you would say it doesn't make any sense. And worse than that, uh, Allah, they say that God, may Allah forgive all of us, had to send His own child, His begotten child, to be sacrificed so that He will be able to forgive us. Because God is so merciful that He has to sacrifice His only child to forgive us. This is, it doesn't make any sense. If somebody came to my house and stole, should I kill my child to forgive them? No. So this is the basics and the principles of Christianity. When you talk about to Judaism, they show you that we are the, the elect people. You know, we are the beloved uh, of Allah. We are the children of God. That's not true. But in Islam, Allah tells us this that you are all equal. In the Akramakum in the Allah at Abu. The best of all of you are those who have more God consciousness. So this religion makes sense. Those religions don't make sense to people. And they know that. And they know that these medicines they give people, the money they give people, all these things, some people are there thinking. So now they want to ruin the image of Islam. But Alhamdulillah, we know that Islam is the 
most and the fastest growing religion both in Africa, in Europe, in America and everywhere. And this will continue. But we should do what we gotta do and let Allah Ta'ala protect his deen because this deen was sent to Allah by uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu by Allah and it is Allah who is going to protect it. And it is the only book that Allah Ta'ala sent that stay. The all the books, the Old Testament, the New Testament, Torah and Injil, all of these things, we don't have the originals at all. And if you look at the Bible, you will find the 40 uh, different authors. And you, you read even the Torah of the Jews, you will see the story of the death of Musa. Musa, it is the one uh, to whom the book was sent. And uh, after death, and the death of Musa is in the book now. So that means this book is not the book that was sent to Musa. This angel is not the angel that was sent to, to Isa because they talk about the life of Isa in different versions. And those who wrote about Isa, they didn't even suck or so Isa alayhi salat, alayhi salatu was salam. So let us go out uh, to, to learn our deen, know it, call upon it. As Allah wa ta'ala said, wa anna hadha sirati mustaqiman fattabi'uhu wa la tattabi'u sumula fatafarraqa bikum an sabili. قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته